Hello everyone and welcome to the second of the four video series about how we do UX here at Vivify Ideas. My name is Danilo and I'm going to guide you through it. The design process here at Vivify is basically a variation of four-part double diamond process. We were talking about it for a bit in the first video. Uh, the first video also referenced the processes that we use in the first section, which is called Discover. The two techniques that I want to talk about today are card sorting, which is also called affinity walls or affinity diagram, and creating a user persona. The first technique, card sorting, is basically what the name itself says. It is basically boiling down a number of statements after you've done your interviews, after you've done your micro-usability tests, after you've done your competition analysis you end up with lots and lots of material. So the first step in this technique is going through that material and trying to find single statements out of that material. So you're going through your audio, you hear a sentence which a user said, which sounds really good on its own and kind of has a point. For example, for example, user number two is frustrated with the checkout process on a particular website. So you go through this material, pull out those types of sentences, pull out any user questions that have remained unanswered, pull out any of your observations from your notes, etc. So you end up with between 40 to 80 statements. After that, you spend some time with these statements. See if some of them can be grouped by something. So out of this 80 statements, let's say 22 of them reference a terrible experience while using that aforementioned checkout process, which we used, for example. And maybe 25 of those statements are getting really frustrated with the part of entering coupons in that checkout process. So you kind of have these two uh, different levels of uh, specificity, but uh, all in all, you can round them up under one statement, which is a uh, checkout process needs to be improved, especially parts of coupon code process. And that is a single action point that you can drive out of these statements. So you're usually going to end up with three to five action points out of these statements, but I encourage you to go again and see if you can find some other criteria by which you can sort these statements. That way you can end up with, with uh, multiple action points and you can sort of uh, you can sort of read between the lines uh, 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 and see some things that might not be obvious at the very first glance or in the very first pass. This technique, just like macro-usability tests and heuristic analysis that we talked about in the first video, can be used throughout the whole design process. Uh, the second place where I would personally use this technique is trying to establish some sort of information architecture. We, you can also do this in this particular phase. Um, basically, the idea is you kind of uh, make a list of all the features, or all the functionalities, all the different menu items, all the different pages that you're going to have on your website. Gather a number of your colleagues and let them have a go at sorting these menu items. You're probably going to end up with 70 to 90% of overlap and this is a very good starting point for your information architecture, your navigation and basically, and out of this you can start, uh, start doing your sitemap and start doing the wireframes. This can really sort any types of navigation dilemmas and honestly it's much better starting point uh, rather than just assuming what could work the best with the data that you have. The second technique, or let's say artifact, that I want to talk about today is the dreaded user persona. I say dreaded because the verdict on them is not clear. Like, uh, people are either uh, not using them or saying that those are the main uh, 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 reference points to your design or they are assuming them. And basically, today I just want to talk about how can you not assume them that much and how can you build uh, uh, realistic personas based on the data that you gather through the interviews and through the micro usability tests that you've done. So for this I'm going to use a dirt bike e-commerce store. Uh, let's say that uh, your ideal customer would be someone between 18 to 28 for example. Uh, those are people with at least college degree with some decent amount of money to spend on the parts that you're selling. 
that's like the ideal customer that you want. But on the other hand, through the research, turns out that uh, people who are actually having the least frustration of using your type of product are the kids who are between, let's say, 12 to 18. They, they are buying the parts for their little dirt bikes. Um, they do not have the education that you thought they're going to have. So basically they're just like middle school or maybe high school at, at most. Their income is not that great. And the, the part that they are really getting frustrated on is trying to figure out how those credit cards work, or what numbers do I need, where do I type them. And that's the part that they're going to need the most help with. So basically your ideal person is a cheerful guy who has loads of money and no frustrations at all, which is not going to happen. So let's say that your real customer is probably going to be younger poorer and less educated with a bit more frustration than your ideal customer. Okay, let's say that you have a spectrum of people that you've done the research with. You have some people 50 plus, some between 30 to 50, and all genders of course. And, after, and out, out of those people, it turns out that people between 14 to 18 are probably the ones with least frustrations and the biggest motivations to use your product. So you can see that uh, the types of people that you've worked so far with are closer to the second uh, uh, type of customer that we described earlier. Out of this, you can see that the closest to your ideal customer is going to be the second example that we talked about, the irritable teenager with not too much money to spend. So you can assume that this is, I don't know, let's say he's a kid named Joshua, he's 16, he had his first job flipping burgers or something. So let's say that he gave his first paycheck to his mom and his mom said, okay, so you have uh, your paycheck plus some money to spend. Here's a credit card, go to the website and order what you want. Um, he's a guy who is uh, uh, into sports. So he's probably like very competitive and tends to get really irritated when the things do not go his way. He's really getting frustrated with all the numbers, with all the, 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 the fields that he needs to fill out. And his motivation is uh, those bike parts need to come to his house as soon as possible. And Joshua would be the persona that you're going to talk to while building the website. So out of this, you know that when you start building your checkout process, when you do the wireframes, you're going to reference Joshua and his frustrations with this and see if you can improve it. If you can, let's say, dumb it down a little, but I'm not going to assume that Joshua is a stupid guy. After all, he knows how to install those parts. So out of this, you can see that we do not assume the motivations, the frustrations, the education level or anything about this persona. The persona is somewhat rooted in the data that we had. And a persona like this is uh, much more useful for, real, for realistic referencing later on in the design. You're probably going to have, let's say, two to four personas. Yeah. So for example, if you're building the admin panel for the same website, you're probably going to have some people who are going to be, I don't know, 25 plus working on that website, uh, publishing the products, uh, managing the inventory, dealing with the checkouts. And uh, those people can be persona as well. If you're building the whole UX for them, you can, you should actually consider them as well and try to see what kind of uh, motivations, frustrations are those people having. We talked about personas, we talked about card sorting, we talked about uh, information architecture. So the next stage of this would be to actually try and build up some wireframes, see how do they stack up against the data that we've gathered and see if they're going to be close to what we actually can deliver as a design and as a useful product. So join me in the next one. I hope you like what you hear and cheers.